food and wine time. Welcome to today's video, guys. I am here in DCA for the food and wine festival. So let's um, dig in. I have the glazed barbecue pork belly with macaroni salad and the impossible gyro. It's my first time trying it. So and first time trying impossible meat. So I'm really excited. So let's dig in. Okay, here's the aftermath. Um, first time trying impossible, like I said, and it was delicious. Out of 10, I give it a 10 out of 10. The tzatziki was good. The hummus spread on it was good. It had like crispy chickpeas that were spicy. Those were delicious. I could just probably eat those um, and drink a beer. <laughs> but overall, possible meat tasted just like ground beef. It's kind of scary how much it tasted like just real meat, but delicious, 10 out of 10. Okay, so we have a drink here from the Coca-Cola stand over here in DCA. It's by the Hollywood Lounge, um, kind of by the back lot, Sage 12. So this is the watermelon cooler and it has like fresh pieces of watermelon in it. It has, I want to say it was like Sprite or something and it had um, oat milk. So pretty interesting. I'm not one for like, I don't know, oat milk, I guess, but let's just try it. Let's see okay, how it goes. Okay. So I don't know how I feel about it. It's good. It has like a nice light, refreshing taste. I think the Sprite just kind of like throws me off because it's a little crisp, but out of 10, I would give this like a solid seven. It's pretty good. If you don't like like a drink that's way too sweet, something refreshing, then this is the drink for you. I say just try it. Okay, we also got a margarita flight over at the Hollywood Lounge, and this one is going to be a mango. The middle is watermelon, and the last one, number three, is cucumber. So we're gonna go ahead and sip on these margaritas. Cheers update on the flight so my favorite so far is the mango the cucumber one is really delicious it's very light refreshing Ooh, did you get that from there mm -hmm. Ooh, i like the mini that's cool <laughs> <laughs> everyone sees it and they're like oh but i mean honestly it's delicious i think you should definitely try it if you're interested in trying some margaritas um i think my least favorite surprisingly was the watermelon i love watermelon drinks but um, yeah, mango happens to be my favorite. Second favorite is the cucumber. And third will be the watermelon. Okay, next food item is the artichoke bisetta. And it has like pickled onions on it. So far, the smell of it is very like artichoke forward, <laughs> but very good. Uh, good looking, I should say. But we're gonna dig in and, and see if we like it and I'll give you the rating. Okay, so we're on our last piece of the artichoke bisetta. And they had a, it was like a sun-dried tomato cream cheese and a garlic cream sauce and pickled onions, artichoke, and like a lemon olive oil drizzled microgreens on top. Out of 10, I give this a 10. Honestly, so far, we're off to a good start. I haven't had anything that I don't like, so I'm pretty optimistic for the rest of the food. So <laughs> I'm going to finish this off. I did get a larger size of the... Uh, cucumber cocktail so delicious and refreshing pretty dangerous I think it's gonna be one of those creeper type drinks but we're gonna finish this off and we'll catch you on the next food item so I'm trying a bunch of firsts today for some reason I haven't had the shawarma from the shawarma palace cart uh, here in DCA before so it's my first time trying it I did get the meat version of it this is the New York's tastiest they do have a um, impossible uh, shawarma if you're interested and then it comes with the side of I want to say it's like a cucumber tahini sauce so I'm gonna go ahead and dig in and let you know what the rating is okay so I forgot to give a rating on this I mean it's pretty much been devoured but I think out of a 10 I give it like a strong 7 even maybe like an 8 honestly like for it being quick service uh, I mean everything was just so flavorful and I feel like it's really slept on, at least by me. So out of 10, I give it a solid eight. Okay guys, so we are almost done with our food and wine journey. Um, this is like a little bit of a delay. Um, we were trying to get on Web Slingers, but the ride was like not working at the moment. So we were stuck there for like an hour, just kind of in the same spot. So we decided to just kind of get out of the line and just continue on with our food and wine journey. So. Um, we have the uh, beef boutine here. This is the burrata and then this is Kenny's family cheesecake. So we're gonna dig in and I will let you know the ratings on okay, these items. So as far as the beef and barley poutine goes, really not that impressed with it. I think out of everything that I've tried, that's 
so far like my least favorite. I would give that one like a 5 out of 10. It's not like bad, but it's not something I would waste like your tab on. And that had potato bites with braised beef, short rib, cheese curds, stout gravy, stout, sorry, stout gravy and a micro sponge. And I don't know, it just really wasn't as good as the other items that I've tried. So um, it sounds really good, but for some reason it just kind of lacked in flavor and I just really don't recommend it. Like I said, five out of 10, not bad, but not really all that great either. So we're gonna go ahead and try the burrata and I'll update you on that one. So update on the burrata, I give it a nine out of 10. And this one, I'm gonna try to see what it came with. Let's see. I didn't get anything from Garlic Kiss, but the grilled top sirloin, I had that last year. It was really good. So I would definitely check that one out. Let me find it. Give me a minute. Burrata had grilled ciabatta with tomato and olive jam, burrata cheese, pesto, and fries dri balsamic. So that was really tasty. And next we're gonna have Kenny's Family's Cheesecake. Uh, and it's just topped with mixed berry compote. So we're gonna dig into that one. I've heard a lot of good things about that one. I also heard a lot of good things about the beef and barley poutine, but that one was a little bit of a letdown. So hopefully this redeems and um, is a solid at least eight through 10. So we'll find out. So the cheesecake is like a solid 10 out of 10. The crust is really delicious. It has like nuts in it. And uh, the berry compote is really nice. Cheesecake is like very nice and thick and dense. And um, yeah, solid 10 out of 10. So before we go pick up our last two orders, we're going to Clucky Doodle Moo and Pepper's Caliente. But in the meantime, I'm having myself a prankster. If you've never had one of these, I say try them. I first discovered this beer here in DCA. So every time we come, it's like a staple to get one. So we're gonna enjoy this before we head on and get our last two items and call it a day at DCA so we can head over to Disneyland. So um, I'll check in with you guys when we try our last two items. Okay, second to the last item. This is from Clucka Doodle Moo. This is the smoked honey habanero chicken wings and they're just tossed in honey habanero seasoning. Definitely looks like it's gonna be a dry heat, so hopefully not too hot. So we're gonna dig in and I'll give you the rating. <laughs> She's burning her mouth, she ate two wings. It came with, I think, four or five. I had one, no, it came with four. So I had one, my mom had one. And then she had the last two, so she's like on fire right now. Um, which is why I was laughing before this, because she's just been kind of dancing around. Cause that heat, she's trying to tame the heat. So the best way for her is to just dance it out, I guess, so. Yeah. Um, what would you rate them? Um, I would rate them maybe like, I would say like a seven, a eight, a eight, eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Okay. Like, they're good. Like they're like they have good flavor and like they're good. And like the heat tolerance is not like it's like too hot and you, like you can't eat them and like it's like good enough. So yeah, I would eight say an eight. Okay. I think that's fair for me. They were like perfectly crispy, so I say ten out of ten. Like Wingstop needs to do something like that, and I think they'd make bank on that because that was delicious so the last thing to try is the camarones a la diabla at peppers calientes so that's gonna be our last stop and then we're gonna head back to our room refresh and head back to disneyland it's gonna be a long night Diablo from Cocos Caliente. It has just your traditional Diablo sauce, the shrimp there, and then some cilantro lime rice. So I'm gonna dig in and I'll let you know the rating. Okay, here's a little bit of a surprise. I didn't know if this was new or not, but this is the peach cobbler chudo. And um, it looks like there's like cookie crumbles on top. You just have like your peaches and like their sauce there and your regular chudo with whipped cream but it just looks delicious so we're gonna try this pretty soon and i'll let you know what okay, we update on those shrimp so hot 
I only took one bite and I'm like totally tapped out. I won't be eating anymore. I took like one bite and it literally knocks me into having the hiccups. So I'm done. Flavor wise though, I would give it like a 10 out of 10 flavor wise, it's there. You can tolerate hot food. I recommend it. You cannot. I don't recommend it <laughs> because it's just way too hot to even enjoy, honestly. So rating wise, because it was just like way, way too hot for me, I would give it like at least a seven because it's so hot that it's just it's not tolerable, but flavor wise, it's there. So if you're someone that can tolerate the heat, definitely try it. I think you're going to love it. Um, they have crispy onions on top, so it really kind of helps balance like the softness of like the shrimp and the rice and that crunchiness of the onions really helps kind of balance it out. But one bite and I'm done. <laughs> so if you can't tolerate heat like that, I would say skip on it. Don't waste a tab because I literally had one bite and I'm done. So um, that pretty much concludes like our food and wine um, tabs. We had eight tabs total. Everyone gets eight tabs. Um, so we're pretty much done. I am gonna try that peach cobbler chudel to try to tame the heat because I'm dying here. I have hiccups, I'm trying to hold them back. But I will let you know the rating on the chudel. I think that's a new one. So. Okay, so update on the uh, peach cobbler chudel. 10 out of 10, it was delicious. It was crunchy, soft, and the fruit was a nice balance along with the uh, whipped cream. So 10 out of 10, it was kind of by the uh, uh, Rapids Ride in DCA. So if you get a chance, try it. I'm still burning up from that spicy shrimp. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not making sense, but that is why. Okay guys, so here is uh, this little sign here at the Grand Can Californian Hotel. And it says 100 years of Disney. The talented team at Disney Grand Californian Hotel and Spa created this special confectionery to celebrate 100 years of Disney. The castle stands over five feet tall and eight feet wide. Can you find the five hidden Mickeys? And it gives you a recipe to make your own. Look how amazing the Fab Five looks in front of the castle. I'm still trying to find the hidden Mickeys. Let's see. Let me know in the comments if you guys find any. I'm trying to kind of like take a step back so you guys can see too. Oh, okay. So I see one so far. I believe I do. Wait, maybe I don't. <laughs> I wonder how much Mickey weighs. I wonder how much Goofy makes or weighs. He's like huge. This is just amazing to look at though. Can I take the castle and Mickey home, please? So cool. And you can share this on your social media. There is a hashtag and you can share your photos with the Grand Californian Hotel and you can uh, do hashtag Grand Californian Hotel and hashtag Disney 100. So this is very neat to see here at the hotel. Definitely check it out if you have a chance. Okay, so this was harder than I thought it was going to be, but here's one. I can kind of zoom you in. There's one hidden Mickey. The second hidden Mickey, oh, is here on the castle. There at the corner. And there's another on the other side. I'll have to make my way over there, but we're still missing two more. So they're probably staring like right at me and I just can't see them. Okay, there's the third hidden Mickey right there on the side of the castle. We were talking and we feel like there has to be one on Mickey. We just can't find it. So we're gonna keep on searching. Hopefully we can find the last two. Okay, so we're a bit late now, but we're back in Disneyland hours later. So fireworks shows about to start at 9.30. So we're trying to find like a decent spot to watch the fireworks. We haven't seen them before. Um, so that's what we're hoping for. And then after probably grab a bite to eat. We haven't eaten since DCA. 
which for me is a long time. So hopefully we can find something good. I'm thinking um, Tank Road Terrace. I don't know, it's kind of just like my go-to on a late night at Disney. So that might be the move tonight. But I will let you guys know. We're trying to get on some rides too. It's about nine. We're gonna stay here till like closing. So until they kick us out. So uh, <laughs> I'll show you guys what we end up getting and maybe some of the fireworks if we can catch them and just bring you along with us through the night. So I'll check in with you guys. Dinner, it's about 10. We were a little late getting back to the park. We did watch the fireworks show. So to grab a quick bite to eat, we went to Bengal Barbecue. And I also went to Tropical Hideaway. We have bao buns in these bags here, some sweet lumpias, and then a uh, rice plate from Bengal Barbecue. I have the asparagus, or bacon wrapped asparagus, and the pork belly skewer. And then for the first time, I'm trying this, um, I forgot what it was called, it's like a tiger tail or something, but it's basically just like a cheese and garlic breadstick. And uh, to drink, I have a nice hot tea. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig in. For me, honestly, this is like a solid 10 out of 10. It's very filling, everything's tasty, flavorful, and they're open pretty late compared to other uh, like little quick bites in the park. So this is always our go-to whenever we're running late and we just need something that's gonna fill us up and be quick and easy. So um, yeah, I give this definitely a 10 out of 10. Okay, so we're out here by the fire. At the tropical hideaway. I don't even know if you can see it. I'll flip you around at some point. But this is the char siu bao bun. And let's go ahead and take a bite. So let's see. Pretty good, it's really sweet. Meat is tender. I'm gonna take a few more bites and give you a rating. Okay, there's a fire, I promised you. So the torches are going. This is the skipper's walk, tropical hideaway. <laughs> okay, so they do give you like a little spicy sauce here on the side too. So I'm gonna dip my bao bun into the spicy sauce. Let's see. Really nice. Bao bun. I give it a strong 8 out of 10. Okay, these are like a must for me every time. These are the sweet lumpias. And then it comes with a dipping sauce. And we said it tastes like pineapple kind of, so... I don't know, I think I'm gonna try it without it and then try one with it, so let me dig in. Okay, so the sauce is a no for me. Out of 10, I give it a three. It has good pineapple flavor, but it just tastes like tahin, so it's kind of like odd to me. So I'm just gonna finish the rest of it with no sauce, nice and crunchy. I don't know if you can hear Fantasmic in the background. It's the 10.30 showing. I was hoping that we could have maybe catched it, but we're still eating dinner. We got in kind of late to the park, so. But these are always like a 10 out of 10. Like you don't miss with these. These are delicious. So if you ever have a chance, come to Tropical Hideaway and get some sweet lumpias. Okay, look at how beautiful the castle looks. All done up in its 100th best. So amazing, that little pendant up there, Disney 100. Fantasyland at night that just hits 
on Matterhorn. I don't like Matterhorn. My back doesn't like Matterhorn. But I'm doing it for my sister. We survived Matterhorn. I think we got the newer track because, oh, it didn't hurt that bad, but still wasn't pleasant. So, like I said, I did it for her. This is like a once in a rare time that I do this. So, um, fun overall, though. Okay, here we are heading towards Mickey's Toontown for the first time in like years. I've never really had an excuse to come here, but we're gonna ride Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway for the first time. So we're super excited. Tomorrow is like the grand opening of Toontown where everything will open up. Um, so we're super excited. I'm just excited to get on the ride. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I heard a lot of good things about the queue alone. So I'm super excited. It's so pretty over here. And it's so odd to see Toontown open this late, but I'm here for it. There's the Toontown sign in the corner. There's the ride. Hey, we're in Toontown. Here is Mickey and Minnie. New fountain. We have some food over here. If I weren't so full, I would probably get something. Hey, we're in Goofy's play yard over here. So, that hopscotch with my little Crocs. Hopscotch over here. There's a Bigfoot lookout and some slides over here. Unfortunately, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is down for the night until tomorrow. So I will have to catch this on my next trip, but I'm totally fine with that. I'm just excited to see the rest of Toontown. Okay, this is like strange, like you're supposed to walk down this. And so I'm just like trying my best to get my cross. This is gonna be fun for a lot of kids. Okay. Some more play areas over here. We're gonna go into Goofy's house. Everything so far is just so cute. I feel like Toontown was so overdue. here in Toontown for like the last 30 minutes I can honestly say it's a lot of fun your kids are gonna have a blast they're gonna be so tired it's like a lot of interactive uh, things for them to do here I mean Toontown always kind of had that interactive uh, aspect of it but I don't know it's just new it's improved uh, like the last 30 minutes that we were in here I even had fun myself 
Toontown was overdue for a little revamp and I'm glad we were able to catch it before tomorrow's grand opening because I know it's gonna be just crazy hectic tomorrow. So I'm glad that I was actually able to see some of it. I didn't get to ride the ride, but that's okay. Um, we will be back and we will ride it then. But yeah, I'm just glad I got to see Toontown. It's currently midnight. So we might hit up one of the stores before we leave and the park closes. And that'll be our Disney day. So yeah, I'll let you guys know where we end up. Okay guys, so the day is pretty much over. It's at least 1230. So everything in Disneyland is already closed except for shopping and it was a lot of fun we started the day in dca did some food and wine and ended the long night in disneyland had some fun in toontown for the first time in like years like since like way, way before covid probably so it's been such a long time since i've really had a reason to go down there but it was lots of fun and i'm super tired now ready to go kick my feet up call it a night but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video just as much as I enjoyed making it. I will catch you guys in the next one. Please make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't. And for my new subscribers, just want to say thank you to all of you that have subscribed recently. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye.